It's 8.30 and we're here with the 30 High Beam this morning. And our guest this morning, pleased to welcome in Lauren Burrell, the ODOT District 11 Public Information Officer. Hey, Lauren, good morning. Good morning, Brad. Hey, good to have you on with us this morning, and uh, especially since we just got through this big snow event. I'm sure uh, you were well, well aware of that uh, middle of last week that that was probably on the way. So uh, yeah. I guess everybody, <laughs> when we think, uh, especially this time of the year, when we think of uh, ODOT District 11, we think of the uh, snow plows and trucks and, and uh, all that. Uh, is that the main focus, really, that's going on with uh, District 11 at this time of the year? Yeah, so, you know, of course, this is our signature um, service, is what we like to say, uh, our snow and ice. And, you know, when we're not doing snow and ice, uh, it's our time to focus on. We do tree trimming and guardrail repairs and uh, pavement repairs and that kind of thing. But um, generally speaking, you know, we're, we're focused on snow and ice when, when it's coming down. Right. Well, we sure appreciate the uh, effort. And this was a tough one because uh, actually for a time, I'm sure you guys had a hard time keeping up because of the uh, amount of snow that was falling and the wind that was blowing things all around. But uh, eventually uh, we got things all cleared out. So uh, first, appreciate our thanks. And second of all, tell us how this is all mapped out and you know how do you coordinate the effort for a snow event like we had? Absolutely. So you know, we're always looking at the forecast and, you know, we actually have forecasters that we work with, um, you know, to keep an eye on things. And this is one of those events where, you know, we were either going to get one to two inches or, you know, in some places we got nine to yeah. 12. Uh, so we didn't know what to expect, but, you know, as we go into any, every snow and ice event, you know, our drivers will tell you that um, there's never a true game plan. And what I mean by that is we don't know what to expect, what kind of snow, you know, if it's going to be a wet, heavy snow, if it's a light snow, you know, how fast it's going to come down. So there's no rule, um, you know, set playbook, you know, it's just kind of once they get rolling, they just, you know, do what they know to do. And um, with this one, you know, it came down hard. Um, we're uh, getting about one to two inches per hour. And in those types of conditions, you're not going to see pavement. Um, and we always, you know, try to stress that, you know, from the public relations standpoint on social media and that kind of thing that, you know, you're not going to see pavement. And our, our goal is to make the roads passable, not perfect. Mm -hmm. And we always encourage people to stay home. If the roads, you know, when we're getting weather like that, you know, please stay home. If it's not necessary to go out, just, you know, stay home. Well, that's, that's a gauge too. If you're scared to drive in it, don't. <laughs> you just yeah, absolutely. make it worse. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. We think of uh, ODOT District 11, uh, you know, you can s see your uh, facilities there right off of uh, US 250 and mm -hmm. think of it as local, but you cover a lot of area and counties, do you not? We do. We actually have seven counties that we oversee. So that includes Belmont, Carroll, Columbiana, Harrison, Holmes, Jefferson, and of course, that's for us. And uh, we have about 3,500 lane miles that we're uh, responsible for here locally in Tuscarawas County, about 584 miles that we plow and treat. And how many trucks and drivers does that take? So um, district-wide, we have about, um, oh, let's see here. We have, oh gosh, about 120 drivers mm. total um, locally. Here we have um, over 20, but um, 20 trucks in uh, 17 snow routes that we run in Tuscarawas County. That, that's just in this county. Yes. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I know yeah. over the past few years, uh, well, for a while, salt was an issue. And uh, you're not using as much pre-treatment salt as you are with the, uh, I don't know, some sort of saline mixture. Um, how did that come about? And it, does it seem to be working? Yes. Yeah, so we use liquid brine. Um, it's a mixture of our, you know, salt and water. We make it, you know, in-house. And uh, we have found that to be, you know, successful over the last couple of years. You know, we're always looking for ways to be innovative and, um, you know, mindful of, you know, taxpayer money and, and everything and, and trying to be effective with our snow and ice efforts. And we found that the brine has been really helpful, um, you know, especially um, on the interstates. Uh, a lot of times, like when we get that slush um, or, you know, we get or a hard pack, so to say, We'll go out and we actually flood the road, which doesn't really make sense because why are we putting water, you know, on the roads <laughs> in cold temperatures? But it helps. Um, they'll get ahead of our plow truck and actually turn it into that flush so we can push it off the road then. Um, so, like, in this, you know, these types of conditions that we had here recently, we had hard pack on the interstate and uh, that, you know, Brian really helped. So, of course, we use it for our, um, you know, pre-treating. Uh, we put that down and it helps, you know, uh, us get a little ahead of things 
to not let the snow bond to the road as quickly as it normally would if we wouldn't pre-treat. And of course, when we get into those really cold temperatures, this isn't effective. So we do know that there's times where it's effective and not effective. And, you know, there will be times where we don't use it because there's no sense in wasting it. Yeah, I think once we get below, what, 22 or something, it starts mm-hmm. to become less effective. So Yeah. 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 Uh, I know one thing that you would like to stress that you really don't have a lot of control over, though, is uh, winter driving safety. Like you said, you need you, you guys are trying to make the roads passable, but it's up to the drivers to uh, do the rest, right? <clears throat> right. You know, we're always stressing winter driving safety. And, you know, like I said, in these types of conditions, we always encourage folks, you know, if you can't stay home. We know that's not always the case. But, you know, you want to leave yourself ample time, you know, get to your travel point. And, you know, um, the State Patrol and, like, AAA really stress, you know, checking your tires. Make sure you have good tires in your car, a full tank of gas in case, you know, something would happen. You would break down, um, you know, and that kind of thing, you know, carrying water, a blanket um, in your vehicle. But, um, as far as, you know, with our plow trucks go, you know, we always stress, you know, to give our trucks plenty of room. Um, one thing that folks need to be reminded of is our drivers have their hands full. Not only are they watching the road, but they're watching their salt um, spread. They're, you know, paying attention to those levels. They're controlling that. They're also controlling their plow. And then on top of that, they're facing traffic. So they're keeping an eye on traffic as well. And they have a lot going on. Our trucks are big, they're heavy, they don't stop easily, and we always say to make sure you're giving them plenty of room, you know, stopping distance-wise. Um, it's really important, and uh, also, they travel well below the post speed limit. Uh, for our efforts to be effective, we travel anywhere between uh, 20 to 35 miles an hour, and that's on the interstate, mm-hmm. and that's something to keep in mind and, and that we stress. Right. Yeah, and um, yeah, the drivers, by the way, uh, do a great job, but... The first time it snows is not their first time out on the road. You guys do uh, some run-throughs and get ready for the season, don't you? Yes, we have winter up, uh, readiness events in the fall. Uh, we go over all of our trucks. We like to say that our trucks are always ready every time of year, but this just gives us an opportunity to do um, inspections on all of our trucks and make sure everything's in working order so that way when the snow does fly, we're ready to hit the road. Well, this was the first big one. Do we still have plenty of salt and uh, gasoline in the trucks ready for whenever it comes again? Absolutely, yeah. We're still looking good on salt, and, uh, you know, we're, we're ready for, for whatever, you know, is to come. And uh, beyond winter, uh, summertime projects, uh, those are uh, being planned now, I assume? Absolutely. I'm actually in the middle of working on our 2022 construction program, and uh, that'll be here before we know it. We kick that off usually at the end of March, beginning of April, um, and some of those projects will actually start here, you know, in the winter time, depending on what it is. but. Right. We're uh, already ready to go, and that'll be here before we know it. I know people don't, uh, they're not crazy about orange barrels, but I'd rather see those than the snow. I don't know about you. Uh, yeah, I, I like the snow, but I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm ready for warm temperatures. <laughs> well, Lauren, <laughs> thank you so much for the information. It's good to know. It's good to talk about, I think, right after we have such a, a snow event. Okay. So uh, uh, thanks, yeah. and uh, good luck to you and uh, your planning there. All right. Thanks, Brad. Hey, we'll have to have you on again, all right? Absolutely. We'll do that. Thank you. That's Lauren Burrell, who is the ODOT District 11 Public Information Officer, talking about uh, the roads this morning and how they take care of them for us here on the 830 High Beam on our BT Morning Show.